Welcome to my brand new YouTube channel, Mixed Girl POV, where I share my point of view on what's good. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please subscribe, please hit that like button. Please comment in the comment section below. And also, please share this video. Let's grow together. Thank you so much. How I used to be anti gun. Let's talk. Quote, my view of guns is simple. I hate guns and I cannot imagine why anyone would want to own one. End quote. That was from Deborah Prothro Stiff who was the Dean of Harvard School of Public Health at the time when she said that. Back when I was coming up, I was taught from a very young age that guns were bad. Remember, my parents were divorced and my mother was a Democrat. And that was one thing of those things that she felt very passionately about. My mother wouldn't allow me to play with toy guns at all. I mean, even water guns were banned from our home. My father, on the other hand, was more cool about it. He would let me use water guns over at his house. You know, on hot summer days, Water guns, water balloons, sprinklers, slip and slide, pools. Those things can be your best friends. <laughs> I mean, for real. You're just trying to cool off from that summer heat when you're a kid or a teen. You just, you just want to stay cool. But when it came to real guns, I was so scared of guns. I was scared that I may die because of one. I was scared at the thought of even being near a gun. I was just plain scared. I can recall the first time that I ever saw a gun in real life. Back in those school days, I kind of, you know, I, I was basically like the good girl who liked the bad boy. I made good grades in school, but some of the guys that I liked, they were more rough around the edges, affectionately known as the bad boys. Anyhow, I had this little boyfriend at the time and he was like a bad boy. Uh, and we were hanging out at his place and there in his room near the door, there was like a chest that had drawers. And he went over there and he pulled open one of the drawers. He reached in inside and would you believe what he got out of that drawer? A gun. He took the gun out of the drawer and placed it at the top of his chest. O-M-G. When I saw that pistol, it was like I literally froze. I couldn't believe it. it. It was one of those things that I never was supposed to be in the presence of. It was a gun. It was like I was having some sort of outer body experience where I was looking at myself down below 
thinking, what the heck are you doing here with that devilish thing called a gun? I'm thinking you, you know you are not supposed to be around any guns at all. It was hard for me to believe that he had one and that I was now in the presence of a real gun. Not a toy gun, not a water gun, a real one. Once I could must up the nerves or the strength, I uttered these words. I told him to put away the gun. And he obliged. Needless to say, that was the last time I ever saw him. I will never forget that moment because it was the first time that I saw the forbidden item, the item that I should never ever want anything to do with. As I was growing up, I saw how our country was changing. I didn't like what I was seeing. Maybe like some of you today. I saw more and more of these mass shootings. When I would see them there on the TV screen being reported on the news, I would think like, I would feel and think, oh, that's so sad. And then the other, you know, like that other part of me would be upset and I'd think that's so bad, I would question, what is this world coming to? Guns are bad. The bad people are getting guns and shooting up the schools, malls, and more. I got more and more afraid of what could happen. There were less and less places for me to feel safe. When I would think of an intruder situation in my home, you know, like a what if scenario, I would quickly kind of get that thought out of my mind. I briefly thought at the first sign of trouble, do what I was taught to do. Call 911, call the police. After I would have that brief thought, I was done thinking about it. I didn't want to dwell on that kind of situation, that kind of scenario. Then as more and more crazy enough, craziness was popping off, I had to eventually go back and really think about that kind of situation that kind of scenario. <clears throat> it 
if a bad person were to come into my home, what do I do? What should I do? And then new questions now started popping up in my mind that didn't before. What if I call the cops, but they can't get to me in time? What do I do then? Do I, do I try to beg and plead with the intruder to please spare my life? Do I plead for them to not assault me or to not kill me? Do, do I tell them that Jesus loves them and ask them, can we pray together? Is there a way to reason with someone who comes into your home with the intent to harm or kill you. I began to wrestle with this kind of situation in my mind. I couldn't just not think about it anymore. I couldn't be that ostrich that places their head in the ground and act like I'm not there, though I really am there. After seeing the craziness and these mass shootings occur more and more, and after really wrestling with this thing, I had to eventually switch my position about guns. Law-abiding, good people have the right to defend themselves from any harm, any threat that may come their way. If you take away the guns from the law-abiding good people, then the only people who will have the guns are the bad people. And law enforcement, you wouldn't be able to defend yourself, your family, in case of an intruder. In an emergency situation where someone's life is on the line, it could be yours, mine, your family's. In that kind of situation, every minute counts. Every single second matters. Think about it. Just think about it for a moment. A person bursts into your home armed with a gun. You could be dead before you could grab your cell phone, dial the number, get connected, and tell the dispatcher what's going on and where your location is. You could be dead 
And there's no calling the police once your brains have been blown out. What if you are able to make that call to the police? You could be murdered in the time it takes for the police to arrive. Life is so precious. All of our lives matter. I wish we lived in a perfect world. I wish we lived in a perfect country and in perfect communities. I really wish that there were no bad people in the world, in our country, in our communities. But the truth is there will always be a percentage of bad people, bad people living at any given time and at any given place. Thank God for the police. I respect them. I support them. However, we are our best and first line of defense. Remember this. Guns don't kill people. People kill people. That's the bottom line. It's people who choose to kill other people. Guns are just one of the many ways that they can choose to end someone else's life. But it's not the guns. You can't blame the guns. Blame the person with the gun. So, after putting it off and off and off some more, I finally bought my first gun in that crazy year called 2020. In the words of Bryson Gray's hit song from last year, I'm now a new gun-toting patriot. So let's talk. Have you ever been anti-gun? Are you currently anti-gun? Have you been on one side of guns and you decided to switch your position about guns? If you did, I'm so curious to know as, as to why, if you don't mind sharing. Do you believe that it's guns that kill people or is it people who kill other people? What are your thoughts? I'd love to know. Please comment down in the comment section below and I will see you there. Let's talk.